Elemental Energy was released in November 2005. This set introduced the Dark World archetype, a handful of fiends with a myriad of powerful effects that trigger when they're discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, allowing for powerful swarming capabilities. Notable cards in this set include Brow Huntsman of Dark World, Silva Warlord of Dark World, Hydro Gedon, Dark World Lightning, and a card that pays homage to everyone's favorite draw spell, Pot of Avarice. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series. Oh my god, you guys, Cyber Dragon just completely changed the game. And it actually did change the game when it initially came out because it's a 2100 special summonable body. It's so difficult to deal with. I mean, yeah, but for the sake of our format, it's even more difficult to deal with, but it just answers so many things. And it's really just the definition of power creep in a nutshell. But another win under the belt cannot complain too much. That was a very big episode because I now have the chance to spin for some dark beginning two packs. These can be completely game changing. I still have to hit them on the wheel. Otherwise, we're going to be going into the wild card section, which maybe not be the best. So here's hoping we have a 50% chance. I'm going to go ahead and change it up a bit. Instead of just clicking it once, we're going to click it a bunch of times here just so we can get a nice good spin on it and see if we can get those dark beginning two packs. Come on, baby. Let's see it. Oh, oh it looks like we're going to get them. Oh yeah, that's what I like to see. Okay, you guys, here we go. Dark beginning two. There is a possibility that I can pull some absurdly broken cards that Gage and I haven't even technically had access to yet. And this could be a real game changer moving forward. There's 12 cards. A lot of the cards are reprinted at lower rarities. Let's see what we get. Gemini Alpha, Pyramid Turtle. Okay, that's neat. Oh, I got Mirage of Nightmare. <laughs> Oh, baby. I, you know, the thing is, is Mirage of Nightmare that good in our format? If we can't, it has to be good, right? It has to be good. Let's go ahead and move on to the second pack, but that is a great start. All right, pack number two. The first one was pretty good to us. I got a morphing jar. Are you serious? Oh my god, that's huge, especially with my deck in particular, being able to then just discard my whole hand, which could have like no cards in it and draw five with all the trap cards that I'm playing now to combat Emperor. This could hit Emperor out of his hand. Now, now conversely, it could get him closer to Emperor because he goes another five cards in, but oh my god, this is insane. I think that's the only real good card in that pack, but talk about a game changer. All right. And so moving on to our last pack, uh, this has been pretty ridiculous. Not going to lie. I don't know how much better it could get. Book of Moon. Cool. Kaiku. That's not bad, actually. I don't know if Kaiku's really worth making the main deck, but it's a big beater nonetheless. Uh, and it looks like that's going to be it. But overall, some pretty good cards. Not going to lie. This definitely uh, just beats, you know, getting regular tournament packs or anything else. So we might be making some changes to the main deck for sure, but let's open those elemental energy packs first. Ooh, another week back in the loser circle. It honestly is what it is, but if my deck gets chugging, if it works, oh, Alex will never win a game. Hopefully we can find a couple more upgrades in elemental energy released November 5th, 2005. Elemental Energy marks the debut of some pretty cool things, one of which being the Dark World. You can see Zur coming up at the top there. He's not really good on its own. He's 1800, which is cool if this was like, I don't know, six episodes ago. <laughs> There's a couple other things that are cool in this set. Elemental Hero Wild Heart's pretty neat. Level 4 Earth Warrior. Unaffected by trap effects. Sakuretsu armor just doesn't matter against this guy. The Dark Worlds in particular get me rather excited because there are some really good ones released right out the gate. We don't have Grapha. We will never will have Grapha, I don't think, because that was released in a structured but cards like Beige, Brow, and Silva are actually really sick when you tear them in tandem with the Dark World support cards, or any card that discards as effect. Brow especially, you discard it and you draw a card, not even that bad. 
And also, Silva just being a 2300 beat stick you can drop on the board pretty easily is not that bad either. Some more VWXYZ support, you know we pulled all those cannons and everything in those earlier episodes, but we will never see the light of day of those. Whole bunch of elemental hero cards released that we will probably never play too because not only do we have to have the fusion monster itself, we have to have a good polymerization spell as well as both of the materials with it too. So unless we can capture a large amount of all of those, we'll probably never summon these things. Most of them taking up the ultra rare slot, a little scary. But one big card below it, Pot of Avarice. Target five monsters, shuffle them into the deck, draw two cards. Recently, is it even recent anymore that this card's back at three? But oh boy, this card is sick. Having this in our deck with no cards like DD Crow floating around or anything is going to be pretty nice to be able to reset our deck, draw two cards, and be able to do some of the combos, or you know, resummon off of spies, stuff like that. Really awesome card. I hope we can pull one. Only a super rare. It shouldn't be that hard to pull, right? Come on. And then Dark World Lightning is actually not only just good Dark World support or a good way to launch the Dark World, it's actually just a really good card in general. Target one set card in the field, destroy that target, and discard one card. This doesn't discard as cost, it discards as effect, so it will trigger all those Dark Worlds. Popping a set card, any set card, not even that bad either. Pretty neat. Outside of that, Gateway to the Dark World's a pretty neat card, just monster reborn, but you can't summon other monsters turn you activate it but it's a quick play so if i summon it on alex's turn it's not really gonna matter and i guess the last one to really point out is level limit area a change all face up level three or lowers to attack position I guess makes all the weenies forced to battle which isn't that bad but yeah other than that that's that's everything in elemental energy we may not be seeing all of it but we'll be seeing 24 packs of it so let's bust open 24 packs elemental energy see what we can come out with all right guys so now it's time to crack open 24 packs of elemental energy um i'm not super excited about this set cybernetic revolution i think was definitely much more of a highlight because cyber dragon is so powerful i know elemental energy has pot of avarice which can be a very good card i mean it does say draw two but it's kind of weird we kind of want monsters in our graveyard for the chaos synergies i think gauge more so than me but uh it's still a pretty decent card we have these games go pretty long so it could be a good card to kick things off and uh looking at our first pack here not really too much to talk about so this one's pretty cool hydro get on for people who don't know it's a level four six 1600 attack monster that when you destroy another opponent's monster by battle you can special summon another hydro get on so that's kind of cool it just helps you swarm the field a little bit it doesn't really synergize with the rest of our deck i mean it's water you know it's dinosaur it's just like it's it's fine it's nice to get some more field presence but uh i don't know if we're going to be playing it it is a common though so we should get a play set also elemental hero wild heart is also kind of interesting because it's just immune to trap effects pretty prominent back in the day just because it could dodge like sakuretsu armors and stuff just some pretty neat card oh we got a silva war Warlord of Dark World. This is actually kind of interesting. There is the potential we could build some sort of Dark World deck. We don't have like Grapha or anything because that was the structure deck. However, the Dark World cards do kind of synergize with Chaos. I mean, they are darks. Um, you have the potential to just play a lot of really cool cards. So there is the makings of an actual archetype focused deck in this set. I think you have to get pretty lucky and pull a lot of these cards, but I think the majority of them are actually low rarity. We'll see if we get any good pulls, but obviously if Gage gets better pulse he's gonna be in a much better position all right pack number one elemental energy something good nothing good okay okay i i i accept it oh a brow weight off the bat pack number two not bad getting our dark world core put together not terrible not terrible i just want to see three dark world lightning too and then maybe maybe if we get enough dark worlds that are good we can make something happen you hate to see it you hate to see it the elemental hero rampart blaster is our first ultra rare i don't even think there's any other good ultra rares so hey that's cool but Looking next to it, Dark World Lightning is looking kind of pretty there. That Dark World engine still coming together. Oh, wow, that is a hell of a pack. Silva and gold. The only thing strange about gold is it specifically has to be discarded by our opponent's card effect. And if it is, though, we get both of the effects where we can summon it like Silva, but also it targets and destroys two cards our opponent control. Like I said, that one's a little bit more wacky because you need to discard it by an opponent's card effect. So there's tons of things that help you do that, but eh, Silva's the one that's better just because it drops itself if you, uh, if you discard it by a card effect. Now, I mentioned the Dark World cards before, and this is part of the reason why. Dark World Lightning. So it's a normal spell card that reads target a set card on the field destroy that target then discard one card uh it can target any set card on the field which means it can also target face down monsters which i happen to play 
a lot of. So if Gage is playing some sort of Dark World focused deck, he can then pitch a Dark World for the card and then actually trigger the effect of it. Or he can set up his graveyard for some Chaos Synergy to drop like a Chaos Sorcerer, a Chaos Emperor Dragon. This card is actually deceptively powerful in our format. And I wouldn't be surprised if both Gage and I maybe even side deck this because it's pretty good. There's a second Hydro get on. So we almost have the play set, which is cool. Again, I guess aside from Gravekeeper, Spy and Guard, like Hydro get on can hit over everything he has. And so being able to get some more pressure on the field, maybe not be the worst thing because my deck does kind of struggle with offensive pressure, but we are trying to play a control deck. So I don't know. I'm still going back and forth on this one. There's the third Hydro get on, but we also got a super rare V through Z Dragon Catapult Cannon. This card is never going to see the light of day, but uh, people who like Chaz from the GX anime are really going to appreciate that one. Blade Edge is also a super rare that we pull. Not something I expect to play, but neat nonetheless. Oh, pot of avarice. Yeah, dude, that's sick. Love to see the pot of avarice. Really great pull back freshly at three. Maybe we can pull two more, dude, and then just be the best duelist the game has ever seen. Wouldn't that be wild? Man, I'm getting somewhat lucky with the hollows, I guess. Elemental hero, shining flare wingman. Another one of those fusion heroes we probably never will see in the progression series. But hey, at least I can add it to the collection. The virtual collection. <laughs> Oh, another Silva and another Dark World Lightning. That's two, two. Looking great so far. We only got one Brow. I hope I can pull at least another one of those. Then I might actually, you know, for a Dark Engine, these Dark Worlds aren't even that bad. Maybe they can find their way in. There's another V through Z Dragon Catapult Cannon. Not the super rare we want. Like I said, we're going for Pot of Avarice, which is also super rare. Another copy of Dark World Lightning. So that's pretty good. Again, I'd like to have a play set of this. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's a good option to have the way our latest games have been going. There's the third Dark World Lightning, but there's also another super rare Cyber Blader. Again, never going to see the light of day. Unfortunate, but we have to go on. Okay, there's another super rare. That's a gold Woo Lord of Dark World. Again, I think Silva's probably just better in most instances. Also got a King's Knight, if you guys have noticed, uh, depending on how I edit this. I've also gotten Queen's Knight and Jack's Knight as well. So kind of cool. We finished the set. I always loved that trinity of monsters back in the uh, old anime days, but still no pot of avarice that is not looking too good oh a brow and a beige that's two and like five uh we're looking good on this dark world core i need one more lightning and then i actually might even consider this bes tetran Yep, let's keep moving. Two more packs left. Can I get something good? Give me that third brow or at least the third dark world lightning. I don't think I've gotten the third yet. All right, last pack. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, last Dark World Lightning in the third brow. And also, what's that even? Cyber Blader? What a hell of an opening, dude. Oh, man. Let me thumb through this again. Three Dark World Lightning, three brow, three beige, two silver. That's a hell of an engine. Oh, man. Let's get brewing. Oh, my God. We got an Ultra Rare, and it's Elemental Hero Rampart Blaster. Not the best Elemental Hero Fusion, to be completely honest. But for some reason, when I watched the GX anime, I always loved this card for some reason. It also has a very pretty Ultimate Rare, too. So, kind of cool to pick up is it gonna see play no but it's neat only a few packs left here uh level limit area a is actually an interesting pickup here so this is a rare so chances are you know this is the first one i think i've gotten so i'm not sure how many gauge is gonna pick up but it changes all face up level three or lower monsters on the field to attack position so it's the opposite of level limit area b which changes all level four or higher monsters to defense position this is kind of scary gauge knows that i play a bunch of weenies in my deck and if he manages to pull a few of these uh, he could just switch everything to attack. I don't have any defensive capabilities, and it's going to be very rough. We got an ultimate rare armed changer. I wish that could have been literally anything else, but I guess it's pretty cool. And for our last pack, and no pot of avarice for Simo. Okay, so again, I got some hydro get-ons. I got some, you know, interesting things. I got the Dark World Lightning playset as well. Again, we didn't really have super high expectations for this set. No pot of avarice. I mean, that's fair. I did get Cyber Dragon in the last set, and I got Brain Control and Lost Millennium. So I guess the super rare luck was going to run out eventually. Maybe I'll let Gage have 
have this one. I think I still pulled pretty good in those dark beginning packs, so I think that kind of makes up for it. But let's go ahead and load this in the dueling book and see what we can come up with. All right, so I'm going to keep it real. I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work out, but I wanted to at least give it a shot. I decided to splash the Dark Worlds in over the Spy Engine that I had before because the Spy Engine really gets out-tempoed, gets outclassed by Cyber Dragon, which is recently released. I know Alex only has like one of them to deal with, but even just having the one as you saw last episode just completely like dominated everything that I could put out on my board. I could not apply any pressure. It was just a nightmare. So actually having the Dark Worlds, a new kind of card to be able to throw in is interesting. And Dark World Lightning is a really sick card to be able to combat Alex's deck. Alex has a lot of flip effect cards and monsters that he's just setting to get value. If I could pop a Spy, Magician of Faith, Magical Merchant with Dark World Lightning, even a back row to clear the way so I can summon CED. Things are looking great. And if I can discard a Brow or a Silva off it, that's all the value in the world. Alex may want to think twice when he's attacking with his double white magical hat or if he's summoning Festalos. Those are two things that'll trigger these Dark Worlds and then I get just even more value. If I dump a Silva off of like a Festalos or something, I might as well just win the game. It's that crazy. Also with a card like Gateway to Dark World, it is a way to recur a monster from the graveyard on Alex's turn so maybe I can have Tribute Fodder on my turn. You know, if I can't discard the Silva or the Beige on my turn, it's not a huge deal. Other that whole bunch of cards that float the witches and the sang still in there the dd warrior lady the light targets still remain the same pot of avarice finds its way in too shuffling back light monsters with it isn't going to be the goal because i kind of want to keep my graveyard with those light monsters and with running a limited mount like i think i'm only running five or something i'm probably never going to shuffle them back but shuffling back you know the dark worlds shuffling back ced the witches in the Sangin doesn't seem too terrible. This is going to be fun to test out. I, I wanted to try something big and see if this worked for this episode. And since I pulled such a crazy Dark World core, I thought, you know, maybe I might as well give it a spin. If it works, it works. And if it doesn't, we've got plenty more episodes in the series. Don't you worry. All right, well, let's see if we can outsmart Alex. Hit me with that white magical hat this time. I dare you, bud. Okay, so this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. Admittedly, not too many changes. I think I really only included cards from Dark Beginning getting two in here, which is to be expected. I think it's definitely a more higher impact set, but we'll go ahead and talk about the changes. So quickly, just to reiterate, two Chaos Sorcerer, one Cyber Dragon, one Dekoichi, one Gravekeeper's Guard, three Gravekeeper's Spy. I threw Kaiku into the main deck because A, it gives me some offensive pressure because it's 1800. B, it's a dark, so it still kind of synergizes with Chaos Sorcerer. But C, most importantly, if it gets damage in, I can banish cards out of Gage's Graveyard. And that's important because if he only has a few amount of lights or a few amount of darks, I can keep him off of Emperor, and I think that makes Kaiku worth playing, even if it weren't an 1800 body. Also, while it's face up, your opponent cannot banish cards from either player's graveyard. So, at the very least, if I feel like he might Emperor me, I can, like, drop Kaiku, and he has to out it before he can Emperor. So, that's kind of cool. We'll see if it works, but it's just experimentation. So, at the very least, we have the side deck if it doesn't go as planned. Two Merchant, one Magician of Faith. I explained this last time. I don't really have too many spells in this deck, so... I I, even though I have two copies of Magician of Faith, I feel like the one is still doing just fine. Mobius Morphing Jar. This had to make the main deck. I think this is crazy. Now, the thing is, this could accelerate how fast he gets to Emperor and also fuel his graveyard to potentially give him Emperor fodder. So this is a very high risk type of card. However, if we have a turn one scenario where I go like set jar and set three or four back row, I'm going to go like plus five and he's going to go like plus one at most because he's not going to expect I have Morphing Jar, at least in this very first episode of having it. There is some advantage there. Also, if I'm behind and he's in a very winning position, if he attacks into Morphing Jar, I get a brand new hand. I can actually come back and play in the game. So Morphing Jar definitely is going to have a lot of shenanigans ensue. One Night Assailant, one Old Vindictive, one Sangen, had to cut this down a bit, one Thestalos, two Tsukiyomi, and two White Magical Hat, the Dragon Slayer. Next up, we have two Book of Moon, one Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, My Body is a Shield, Pot of Greed, Regeki, and Snatch Steel, and then the Traps, two Bottomless, two Compulsed, Imperial Order, three Wing Blasts, Sakuretsu Armor and Torrential Tribute. Morphing Jar also helps me fuel Phoenix Wing Windblast as well, which is another reason why I really liked playing this. Then for the side deck, Chaos Sorcerer, Exiled Force, Jinzo. These are kind of just remnants from the old version of the deck I was playing. I'm pretty happy not playing Jinzo. I've explained this before, but if I play Jinzo, Gage basically has free reign to summon Emperor without any sort of interruption, unless I specifically have Book of Moon in my back row. So I'm kind of okay with Jinzo on the side and I haven't really done anything with it since, but I like to just have it just in case 
case in case he throws anything weird my way cold wave and mirage of nightmare in the side deck i don't know how i feel about this you guys can let me know down in the comments but i don't feel like in my deck this card is that good now the thing that made mirage of nightmare so good in the first place is that you can like draw four cards and then like pop the mirage of nightmare or like bounce it back to your hand so that way you don't have the drawback of having to discard at random technically in the future if we play a much stronger deck that wants to get cards into the graveyard we'll have access to mirage of nightmare later but for the purposes of this deck right now i actually don't really think it's that good i think the random discard is actually a downside and that's because i want to keep a lot of my good power cards in my hand like you know snatch steel or regeki or things like that and so if there's a chance i randomly lose them off mirage i don't think this card is as good in this particular format as it would be in other circumstances maybe i'll regret that but i figured i'd throw it into the side at the very least another copy of my body the painful choice two smashing ground two magic drain two mind crush one regeki break and the second sakuretsu armor i swapped this out for either the morphing jar or the kaiku i can't remember which but again if they're not working out i can just kind of go back to our old ways because our deck has actually worked the last few episodes and it's been doing its job quite well so i'm feeling pretty confident we'll see what happens it's time to duel Gage, I gotta tell you, even though these booster packs may not be the most impactful, I would say that we've got some pretty high stakes matches with these uh, Dark Beginning and Dark Revelation packs. I just had Dark Beginning for winning the last one. You have potentially Dark Revelation 2 in front of you if you can win this one. I think that's like really what we're playing for here. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm guaranteed to get those Dark Revelation packs, but I'm actually curious if you even got those Dark Beginnings. You had to spin them on the wheel. If you got it, Ooh, that's spooky because there's some good stuff in Dark Beginnings too, dude. Some crazy cards. I did get the Dark Beginning packs. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, dude. Oh, my. There's, like, so many things. You could have gotten a second, what, a third Sangin? You could have got a Witch, finally. You could have got a lot Charity. Of good things. You yep. could have got Graceful Charity. No. <laughs> I think I would have called you up on the phone like you did with me with Emperor uh, if I pulled Charity, because then uh, it's really over. But, yeah, maybe maybe I'm just going to keep my cards close to my chest. You know, no pun intended. But Well, I'm sure see. I'll see it this game, if I, anything. I was so. about to say, you're gonna, you'll probably see what happens. But uh, good luck to you, buddy. Let's see. Good luck, Dolus. Still, oh, I, I win where I'm it matters. Done. I'm done. <laughs> I win where it matters, dude. The ever, the RPS. Oh, do you actually leave? Cool. All right, I win this one by default. Opponent was a no show. Nice. Uh huh. You're not winning shit, my man. <laughs> oh come on, you act like it. Watch when I go second and I get this free card. It's gonna be over for you. It's gonna be too easy. Good luck, duelist. Ah, uh, good luck, duelist. Let's see what we can do. Ah. Uh... Eh, this hand's fine. I'll just go ahead and uh, set a few cards and pass to you. All right, I will draw for turn. All right, Alex, you're going to be able to see a little bit of a tech that I threw in just for this Ooh, episode. Ooh, really? I'm kind of I'm kind of excited about it. I think it might do some uh do some damage here. We'll start by activating Dark World Lightning. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So you actually pull uh, I mean, obviously you pulled it cuz it was a common. So and targets for cost. I'm going to target that back row and I'm going to dump a brow from my Oh, hand. and you got a brow too. I actually don't think I pulled Hold a brow, funny you enough. You didn't. You didn't pull any, dude. Oh man. No, I don't. I'm not sure, but I'm almost certain I did pull a single brow. Okay, so you're gonna just target this left back row here. I actually think you're gonna get it. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of this wing blast, which is a pretty oh, big hit. Not bad. And then I will draw the card off a of brow. Yeah, I was saying that Dark World Lightning is a very spicy tech in our format specifically. I think this card is, but you're, you're playing Dark Worlds too? Oh my God, this could change you everything. Might, you might see a little bit more. It's kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to summon Exiled Force, all right? Okay. And is the summon okay? Summon Resolve? The summon is fine. All right, then I'm going to activate the effect of Exiled Force. I'm going to pop that. You got rid of my Dekoichi. Oh, okay. At least you don't get that value. Unfortunately, that's going to be my turn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, uh, that's fine. No normal summon to fall it up with but still i think it's okay i'll just set and pass go ahead all right i'll draw really want to get the card off that dukoichi that's so i'm sure you did i will set and i'll end my turn go ahead i was really just hoping you were gonna summon that sangan attack into that dukoichi and we were gonna be looking real nice <laughs> but doesn't look like that's gonna be happening i think ooh, i might just go ahead and pass as well go ahead oh all right uh i'll draw Oh, this is looking good. Oh, this is looking real good. Stand by main. Oh my, this is going to be a great push right out the gate. Okay, Alex, I'm going to flip up my Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Okay. And I'm going to discard Zaborg, the Thunder Monarch. I'm going to target your face down. Oh God. I well, don't like where which, this is going. <laughs> I think I think you should be a little spooked, dude. Okay, so that resolves. Perfect. Love to see it. I'm going to normal summon Sangin. Oh, here comes the Emperor. You know it. Do it. 
<sighs> Couldn't go an episode without him, dude. Bam, nope. he hits that board. Yep. Uh, Can you now, use that effect? Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the effect. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to gamble with that face down there. I don't want to lose to it. So I'm going to pay the 1,000. Right. Everything's going to go to grave. Good thing you didn't gamble because it was an old vindictive magician. Okay, okay, good, very good. So, so there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to take 2,400 when this all resolves. And he hit some pretty good cards. Sorcerer, not bad, not bad. Dark hole, oh, all right, not bad. And then I'm going to resolve my sang and mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up witch just to keep the ball rolling, you know? Okay. And I'll just have my turn, go ahead. Early emperor. I mean, I knew what I was drawing, so I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to summon that witch. We're going to get in there for 11. I'll take it. Awesome. And then it's your turn again, Dolist. I will draw. I guess we just have to set and pass. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I love this. This is my favorite gameplay. I'll draw. I am happy to see that your Jinzo's gone, though. That's pretty nice. It's nice for you, yeah. But you you know I have some more spell or trap removal now. It's not like the yeah, earlier episodes. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to tribute this witch. I'm going to okay. summon Mobius. And Mobius isn't going to get the max value, but I am going to pop your face down spell or trap. I... Oh man, that's that's rough. This puts you in a rough dis this puts you in a bad spot, huh? You a little upset. Yeah, I I am actually because of specifically what the back row is. Oh, uh, so it was a good hit. You're gonna get your witch search as well, which is disgusting. This is a very tough decision. I'm probably gonna regret this, but I'm gonna let this resolve. Oh, TT! Oh, that monster face down must be something special. But I'm gonna resolve my witch first. All right, what do I want? What do I want? Witch can grab witch. That's pretty good. <laughs> Isn't that broken? That that's actually just nutty. Um, <laughs> ah, Yu-Gi-Oh, when it didn't have a self-restrictive closet. <laughs> <laughs> that actually just looks like the play. I'm going to pick up another witch because I'm not... I, I just want the cards to keep coming. So... Yeah. I'll go battle phase. You know what? We'll see why this face down was so important. So it's a gravekeeper spy. Okay. Yeah, great. That's fine. I got a 2400 attack monster, so it's not a big deal for me. Nah, and it's not too special. I'll just have my turn. Go ahead. I was thinking, and we'll see how this draw plays out. Oh, oh, oh the top, the baby. Top. No. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Did you get wow, something that's going to wow, get you back wow. in it, though? That's interesting. Did you get something that's going to get you back in it, though? So the reason I didn't want to torrential was because I was thinking if there's, like, some situation that I need that spy on the field or that I'd, like, some reason want your Mobius on the field. It's like, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and Regeki and just get rid oh. of the Mobius. Yeah, all right. That's fine. I know you have Witch. I don't know what your other card is, but I feel like... This is fine. You say that, but when I show you this card, you're going to be a little angry at me. Oh, God. So you didn't see this last episode, but thanks for clearing my board, oh! dude. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Cyber Dragon's just big enough to get over that spy. So I'm going to drop the Cyber Dragon. I'm going to normal summon this witch. Okay. And I'm going to go battle phase. Please don't have Sakuretsu armor. I don't have Sakuretsu armor, but I do have Book of Moon. Oh, Okay, well, that kind of deals for it for a turn, at least. You want to set the Cyber Dragon then? I'm deciding if I want to set the Cyber Dragon or my own Spy. It kind of does the same thing, honestly. I guess it thins my deck a card if I reset the Spy. Let's set the Cyber Dragon. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll end my turn then. Go ahead. Whoever thought I'd get punished for regekiing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll just set and pass. Go ahead. Nice. I will draw. So that could be bottomless or something. Which could be, be a lot a of things. Scary. It could be a lot of things. It could be literally anything. So I'll start my turn by activating Cold Wave. Oh, I, come I, on. Yeah, I really want to hold on to this Cyber Drag. You have no yeah, idea. Yeah, that so resolves. I'm going to flip him up. And then I'm going to tribute this witch for a Silva, Warlord of the Dark World. You and all the tributes to this yeah, game. Yeah, sure. I, I and then that witch just gets some more value. I'm going to pick up the Freed here. He doesn't seem too bad. And then I'll go battle phase. I'm going to try to tack over for 100. And then I'm going to get in for 23. I mean, uh, I'm under cold wave, so it's not like I'm doing anything. <laughs> very fair. Yeah, you're right. All right, go ahead. Your turn, dude. I'll draw. And uh, you got game one. Cold yeah, wave card. <laughs> yeah. It is a hell of a card. Tell me that ba Tell me that face down was bottomless. Just let me know. It wasn't bottomless. Okay, all right. Well, still, we played around whatever it was.
Wow, Gage, those Dark World cards were actually putting in work. I think Dark World Lightning specifically is so good for you because it's basically like having three MST to help just clear the way for your Emperor. And the Dark World cards are dark. So, I mean, that's good for Chaos Synergy. I don't know. I might be in trouble in this one. Yeah, they came in pretty clutch. I'm just saying. You might be you might be a little spooked this round here. Maybe I'll take it 2-0. Well, maybe. It's possible. Uh, I'm going to be going second because we know that's the play. So, go ahead, Duelist. All right. Good luck. I will start it off strong with a pot of greed. That's pretty good. Sure. Draw two. All right. Uh, I will go set one, two. I'll set a monster and I will end my turn. All right. Let's draw. During the draw phase. Uh-oh. Just shoot. I do got the shoot. Let me take a look. Oh, man. You're going to get full knowledge here. You're not going to get full knowledge, actually, because uh, uh, I do have a pot of greed in my hand. Okay. You know what I'm at least I'm happy about? At least you have a monster this time. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, I think a lot of good picks there. Yeah, there is a lot of good ones. Um, I think the one that I want to get rid of the most is oddly enough, Gravekeeper Spy. So we're going to put that back. Okay. We're going to put that on top. We're going to shuffle the deck. All right. You are good to go. Uh, go ahead, my man. I'll pot agreed. Yep. Going to resolve. I will just set and I will set. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, I will draw for turn. At full value dust shoot. <laughs> I'll tribute my witch, and I'll summon Zaborg. So chain link's gonna resolve. Zaborg's mandatory. So chain link one Zaborg. Chain link two. Well, they're both mandatory, so I would stack them anyways. I don't think it matters. So chain link one Zaborg. Chain link two witch. Zaborg, target your face down. That is going to be fine. Okay. Cool. Got rid of my magical merchant. Kind of expected there. And off the witch, I'll pull up another witch. Gimme, gimme. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty expected because unless I pulled something off the pot, I think that that was a pretty safe bet that that's what I was setting. Yeah, yeah. I'll go battle phase and I'll just try to sink 24. 24 will go through. Awesome. Main phase two, set. Go ahead, the list. Let's draw away. Okay, let's go ahead and start things off with special summoning a cyber dragon. Oh, one of your own? Yep, that is yes. fine. I'm also going to normal summon Sukiyomi and target your Zaborg. That is fine by me. Go to battle phase. We're going to have Sukiyomi attempt to attack your Zaborg. That is okay. Sure. And Cyber Dragon will attempt to get in for 21. I'll take it. Not a problem. I will just pass the turn and I will put Sukiyomi back in my hand at the end phase. Go ahead. Okay. I'll draw for turn. Sukiyomi definitely showing her worth against the Monarchs. That's for sure. Not so bad. Stand by main. All right. Well, it works pretty well last time. Let's see if it does it again. I will activate Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and I'll pitch cyber dragon from my hand i'm gonna target your set you do not have another emperor dude come on act like you don't know i have it oh my god there's nothing you can do about it either put that card back on top of your deck get it out of here bro awesome awesome okay and then dynamic duo summon witch wow unbelievable banish banish yeah i'm lagging now too okay Okay, there we go. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, just so I get value off this card, I'm going to flip up Compulse to put that back to your hand. Is this just the end of the game? I don't... Are you dead after this? Let's find out. So you're going to take 41. Uh... Yeah, I'm dead! Are you? No way! What? It's, <laughs> dude, oh my god, it was that easy! The 2-0, the quickest 2-0 of the series, I want to say. That was disgusting. Are you really oh dead? Wait, my. one, yes, two? Yes, because I'm at fifth. fifth I only, you only need five cards. You have eight. That's 2,400 damage. Dude, that was the most disgusting match we've just oh played. That's gross, dude. God. Scoop them up. Those dark revelation packs coming my way. Like, I, I, just when I think, oh, I've got enough outs to Chaos Emperor Dragon. Clearly, I don't <laughs> because of this. Oh, my what God. Was, that was... Okay, what was the card that I stacked? And then let me see. It was the just rest a book of, of moons. So like it would have actually at least like delayed the emperor. Um, I could have I actually don't even think I could have killed it because the rest of my hand was double souk, Thestalo, Cyber Dragon, Kaiku. Kaiku oh, was one of the yeah. things I got from a uh, dark beginning. But yeah, that would have been cool, but like I was not even expecting Emperor to come down that early. Those so, early like, emperors though, you if you like you can't deal with them and I have the witch and sangin to follow up, it's just like it's disgusting. It's so hard to come back. Okay, now you gotta tell me. 
me though, what did you get from your dark beginning? So I did get this Kaiku that I mentioned. So there is an argument, but like I have no, there was no way this was telegraphed unless I just put in the assumption down that, oh, he has a light and a dark. He has emperor. Like mm -hmm. that's the only read that potentially makes sense that you would have emperor because technically what I could have done was instead of going Sukiyomi, I could have done this. I could have booked Zaborg and then I could have Kaiku banished your two monsters in the grave so that you couldn't have emperored me. And that's why I put Kaiku in the main deck because not only is it a way to banish your cards, but also as long as Kaiku's up, you can't banish cards. So yeah. at the very least, even if he can't get in for damage, you have to kill Kaiku before you can get in and summon Emperor or uh, I mean Sork as well, but Emperor is like the big one. Maybe I misplayed by just using Sukiyomi and trying to be efficient with my resources instead of going the Kaiku Book of Moon route, but I still think that was way... Like, I think that's only was correct with the information I have now. Yeah, so, like, when I looked at your hand, too, I saw you had the Tsukiyomi. So, obviously, I know that's an out to Zabor. Right. The thing is, I didn't, right. like, telegraph ahead that you had Kaiku even at all. But, like, the fact that I wanted to get the uh, Zaborg into the graveyard, that was the big thing because I wanted to get a light to be able to get this Chaos Emperor. So, I knew you had Tsukiyomi, but I was like, if you book it and then attack, that's a turn you have to waste to do it. And then that gets me a turn to be able to play CED. So, that was my thoughts behind that. But, um... Well, and that's the thing, though. I mean, it's like, you have... Having the hand knowledge from Dust Shoot too is incredible because you can essentially play that out in your head exactly how that's going to work. And I have no way of no because again, like I cannot just think to myself, if he has a light and a dark, he's gonna have Emperor. I could like assume that moving forward, but I don't think it's like correct to play that way. Otherwise, it's you know kind of just I feel like you have to play very suboptimally if mm -hmm. you're gonna play with that mentality. And then I would just lose if you don't even have Emperor. Cause then yeah. then I use the book, I have no protection from anything, and then you know what's really going to happen at that point. There could have also been an argument, I suppose, to like summon Cyber Dragon tribute Thestalos as well. But again, I didn't know you had it. So, But also, uh, if, you so tribute, if you would have tributed Thestalos and hit the wrong card, that would have been oh, so bad God. for you, dude. That would have been awful. Could you imagine? How many Silvas did you get? Dude, I pulled the most insane Dark World package. Get this. I pulled double okay. Silva. I pulled a gold. I pulled three brow, three bray. Three, three beige. brow? Yeah, three brow, three beige. Three Dark World Lightning and three Gateway. I got like the whole package. I think I only, I don't think I got a single brow. I think I got one Silva and I got one gold. Wow. Right. I definitely. Okay. So, now here's the main thing. Did you get the chase card of the set? I'm I did not get Pot of Avarice. I got one. Okay. Okay. You know what? This is kind of fair. You know, I pulled Brain Control and Lost Millennium. You, so, you, like, no, you did not pull Brain Control. You pulled I pulled two, two Brain Control. Brain control. Yeah. I watched Sorry. it. Act Sorry. like I didn't see it. <laughs> did you pull anything yeah. else good, though? Like any? Was that the only thing you got from your dark beginning? No. So one of the things I got, and you're going to freak out with this, and honestly, I kind of regret playing it, knowing now what you're playing, and I might cut it next episode. I got this. The jar! No, the jar! Yeah. Dude, that's pretty hot, though. But could you imagine I discard five, like, double Silva, and then you have to... Oh, and then your whole hand gets spun anyways? Oh, man. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I would have... I, I was thinking about a universe where I, like, set jar, set three or four pass, and then I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. And then you hit over jar, and I discard every Dark World out of your hand, and I was just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if it was like Silva Silva Brow? So you would discard, you would shuffle back four, and then I would draw two cards on top right. of the five you like, give that me. would be insane. Be and I, I think like playing the Dark Worlds for you, aside, obviously you didn't know I was going to pull Morphing Jar. I didn't know I was going to pull Morphing Jar, but I think what's interesting about the Dark Worlds for you specifically is that it combats White Magical Hat in a weird way. That is and what I like, said, yep. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like if I still hit Emperor out of your hand, there's nothing you can do, but it makes every other hit in your hand really really bad because if I hit a brow, you pot of greed. If I hit Silva, I lose cards at it. Like, that's scary, dude. That's really, really scary. It definitely worked, like, a lot better than I thought it would. I played, I didn't even play, like, the full package. I ended up playing, what, two brow, beige, and two Silva, and then the three lightning in, like, one gateway. Because I just, I was so tight for space. I was like, I can't fit at all. But, like, I figured, like, with that kind of ratio, I should be able to see, like, a dark world plus the lightning when I want to be able to use it. But also, right. something I noticed is, like, getting lights 
into the graveyard. Like when you kept doing, um, what did you do last episode? You Phoenix Wing Wind Blasted, like stacked Merchant and everything too. Like when you mm -hmm. would do that kind of stuff, I wouldn't have a light in the graveyard. So just having a way to get one out of my hand if I have it chilling in there to be able to fuel up for Chaos Emperor was pretty nice too. At least that's what I thought about. So well, you've had Wing Blast as well, but I mean, at least like Lightning's more proactive because you don't have to wait a turn to do it. Yeah. So that's like I think the trade off there. And plus, it's able to just ah, I mean, it's Wing Blast. I think is still better, but again, being a trap kind of is where the you know pros and cons lie. I did get another card. I actually didn't end up playing it. Oh. Uh, I pulled Mirage of Nightmare. No. Oh, that's going to be so, so gross later on, though. Right, exactly. So the thing is, I was thinking for the purposes of my deck specifically, I think Mirage isn't that good because I like to keep a lot of the my power cards in my hand and having them just get randomly discarded off Mirage, I think is a very like risky gamble. Mm -hmm. And compared to like playing an actual format where Mirage is legal, the problem with that is we don't really have a lot of like our own spell and trap removal. Like we don't have MST really. You know, we don't have like yeah. generic easy ways to kind of destroy the own Mirage. So like, I can't go like set everything, activate Mirage, draw four, and then MST my own Mirage so I get to keep everything. It just like, that doesn't work in our format. So mm -hmm. later on, I think Mirage is crazy. I was thinking if like your deck, if you had Mirage, that would just be like game over. But <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, it would not be fair. <laughs> uh, that's basically card destruction at that point. Uh -huh. But that was it in terms of the dark beginning packs. I don't think there was anything else that was too no I, i'm pretty sure everything else was just like whatever not a bad haul from it though like what i got dust and confiscation that was the best i got from mine you at least yeah. got like three really good playable one of them even broken like mirage and nightmare i guarantee later on in the series you'll find a way to put that in but the thing is with jar like jar i mean you feel like it's that good if you're gonna be playing these dark worlds like i, I think jar is actually like a hindrance to me now <laughs> you know i could switch it up again next episode i just wanted to throw the heat at you and it oh my it's it worked so Oh, well. oh, after that, you are not changing after this episode. After you just demolished me in probably the fastest game we've ever had, there's no way you're changing this very much. I'm, I'm curious <laughs> to say what chat's going to say about this, man. You just got, I, I, don't, I don't even use this word. You got embarrassed, bro. That was bad. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, after the cybernetic revolution episode, like I thought that was a quick 2-0. This like put that to shame. Oh yeah. Oh my God. To be fair, having Emperor in hand both games helps. Hey, you know, that, being but. able to play up to three emperor it's pretty all right it's okay you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty good it's pretty good but wait, wait, wait. i mean you know what i think is in dark revelation too oh god oh my god let me look this up to make sure what do you think's in dark revelation too alex i have the chance to get a third chaos emperor dragon no <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an ultra rare. So so take a deep breath. I might not get it, but if I get that third one, I would you ever win an episode? That's so scary. I, yeah, I mean, that is BLS in there too. Then if Emperor's yeah, BLS in there, BLS is in there. I'm pretty sure. Um, Dark Magician of Chaos is in it. Demok. I yeah. really needed to win this episode because then that could have given me a chance to get either my own Emperor or a BLS. Oh, um, not uh, anymore though. You missed that. Not boat. anymore. <laughs> no, that's that that ship has long sailed now. Wow. Oh, we might have to. Uh, we might have to go back to the tank for this one to figure that out. Yeah, get building again, bro. You got to figure something out. This is going to come I, full I was force feeling, next episode. I was feeling so good after the last two episodes. I'm like, yeah, I got this like pretty in the bag. Like I felt like I really had all those last episodes kind of like pretty well in my favor. And, and now that just, I got trounced. That wasn't <laughs> even close, dude. Oh, man. Maybe. maybe we'll see uh. it come back in the next episode. I'm, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be coming over to Team Gage this time though. I wouldn't be surprised after this people are going to be like gage's deck is going to be looking pretty nice so we'll have to see what happens that's what's the fun of the progression series though literally anything can happen the tides are always turning uh one single set can shift it around i think next set is shadow of infinity which again isn't a super high power set i think we have uh treeborn frog which is like cute Ooh, but i don't crazy. think it's that wait no treeborn frog it's not bad actually, like really good it's pretty good for you i suppose you play more tributes than i do i play a lot of back row as well which makes treeborn frog not that good there's also karma cut which karma cuts basically just wing blast except it banishes instead of actually uh spinning to the top of deck so yeah, another piece of removal i suppose but i think wing blast is still a little bit better we'll have to see what happens again most of the time this episode isn't even dictated by the actual pack it's more like the, the prize that we get now yeah yeah
Oh man, things are going to be spiraling out of control real quick, but that's the fun of it. Guys, be sure to let us know down in the comments, hashtag Team Simo, hashtag Team Gage. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Progression Series. I'm excited. Each episode keeps getting crazier and crazier, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, so I'm, thank you guys so much. <laughs> I'm uh, dying to see the first FTK of the series. <laughs> now, we, we saw the first OTK like, what, a couple episodes ago? Now we got to mm -hmm. see the first FTK, and then I'll truly lose my shit. <laughs> At this point, we're probably not too far off. <laughs> honestly <laughs> but guys thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time